Hi folks, I hope you're well. I'm in Monaco in the north of Pakistan and you might ask why I'm here and it's relevant. But its relevance to British history is extremely important. Um, say the other was a, a huge battle against the Shami. I'm going to go to the graveyard that's been forgotten about. It's a very, very pretty area out here. You can see, look, very mountainous. Uh, and I'd like to share this area with you. It's part of my history as well. British soldiers graveyard has been completely forgotten about and that's really sad. Um, you know the Commonwealth Graves Commission need to pick this up, we need to have a look at it and uh, do something about it. So I'll be going there very shortly. Hope you enjoy the film. I'm at the site of the old British graveyard. This area was once British India uh, and there was a war in 1897. Uh, approximately 10,000 Pashtun tribesmen against 10,000 members of the British Army. Now, 2,000 uh, Pashtun tribesmen died. I don't know where their graveyards are and 233 British soldiers died. Now some of the soldiers are buried behind me in the graveyard. So we're going to take a look in there and it's quite sad that these uh, uh, that these um, graves and the fallen have been forgotten. Um, from what I understand, nobody's been here for a long time. So I'll take you through here now and uh, it'll be quite an interesting sight for you. And you may ask, what relevance does this have to Bradford? Well, I'm from Bradford myself, and um, myself, I'm Pashtun. So let's take you now in there, and um, open your eyes up and uh, show you something about British history, which is unfortunately not taught. And it should be taught in UK schools to bring people together, and to also understand that we have a bond going back much further than 1960. You know, we're talking back to the 1800s, 1700s, um, that all this was part of the British Empire. So I'll take you through there now. And I hope you enjoy this little talk. Right, so I'm going to go through this gateway, zoom out a bit. I've got very basic filming uh, facilities here, so I hope this comes out all right. Now, I have uh, to thank the the people around here to to have allowed me in this graveyard, and it is a restricted area. So, as you can see, there are. Crosses on the on the graves around here, uh, and I have to film back. I'm not allowed to film which is right this door. The wall that's behind me. So I'm going to film at this sort of angle, uh, and uh, it is quite treacherous. So you can see all these are graves around here. There are markers here. You can see, and there's a marker here. And then we have something that's quite identifiable to us all, and a marker here. So these and those behind the graves of fallen British soldiers from the 1897 
Malakin War. Now, unfortunately, there are no names on these. So I'm going to walk backwards now again. I'll, I'll talk to you about what remains here. As you can clearly see, there's a grave there. The grave here, that's where, the, where there's no No crucifix on there, and there's one here. A grave. With what I would say to be a typical type English style headstone. And it says on it, in memory of Lieutenant Colonel John Lamb, 24th Punjab Infantry, born September 13th, 1854, died August 23rd, 1897, at Mullacand on the night of the 26th of July, 1897. So clearly this colonel has been forgotten about in history. And it's rather sad really that this has been allowed to happen. Now I'm gonna pan back, there's more graves here. Um, quite a long grave as well, it's not exactly small. And then there's one here. And I'll pan backwards, I'm going to have another one up this hill, hillside. There are graves here everywhere. You can see one here. Pan around and see what I can find. Obviously where I'm standing is very likely that there are graves here as well. There's one here, a mound. Some here, one, two, and there's some across the other side. There's a little bit of a channel of the over here, which is for water. So the wall there, you see the cow there grazing. Um, again, fallen soldiers here, all in that sort of period. One here. I walk back again, again. As I walk back, there's no doubt that there'll be. Uh, graves in this area. Um, so I'm going to come back a bit around this tree. Now we can find again same. There's a clearly a marker here. There's a grave here. I'll just. There we can see. I think this most likely you can see a hole there. So there will have been there will have been there may be metal railings around here. Um, yeah, I think this is the corner. And yeah, I think that's very likely. But this will have been a large grave because there's one there, one here. There's a, a place here with a you see there's a hole in there, a hole in there. So yeah, it's quite, I'm quite sure that there will have been a prominent grave here. Now here, I'm not going to go in there to be honest because I don't know what's in there. Another one here, a grave here. And then I'll work my way down here. Again, these mounds are all graves. Several there. I'm going to move back here, there's an interesting one. Um, again, sorry, I've got to walk backwards because I've got to... I know I've mentioned it several times, but I've got to respect the the, the authorities here that have allowed me to film. Um, but I can only film at a certain angle for sensitive reasons. Great people here as well, they've really been very good to me, they've allowed me to come in here. So, I'm going to take it from this angle, and you can see, there's a quite a large grave here. I'll, I don't know if I can get this in. I'll try to pull this back a little bit. It's going to be a bit jerky. So there's a large grave here. And there's, a, there's some sort of marker stone here, I believe. I'll come to that in a minute.
and you can see it's quite a large grave. Now, over here there's an interesting feature. And I believe it's the headstone through the grave. And look at this. That's fascinating. So you can see it's a it's a prominent grave. It's it's, it's on a raised it's on a raised part of the of the um, graveyard. Now I can't really see what's in my screen. So I'm sorry if I'm going if I'm missing part of this, but I'm going to read this out. It says in memory of number 133 Sapa Jury Gian something 5C 1638 Pon Nusami killed in action 26 of 7th 97 now that's 1897 and then oh, there's quite a few buried here actually um, it says here number 10 1085 Sapper APP Al Lassam died at Mulakund 31st of August 97 1897 number 2529 Sapper Ponus Sami and died at Mulakund 22nd of January 1901 and at number 1737 Sapper Duri, I'm sorry I can't pronounce it, Duruga Chalum died at Khar, or Khar probably, sorry Khar in Pushkar means donkey, so it's probably Khar, 12th of the 3rd, 01, again that's 1901. I'm moving back away from the grave, uh, or the graves of the several soldiers uh, that I just showed you just now, the one that I uh, read the plaque from. So another grave here. You can see it's got one of the curb stones or something on it. I don't know what we call them back home in the UK. So, so this is obviously some sort of prominent grave over here. We don't know where it is or who it is, but it's clearly marked out to be sort of. Oh, I found another one as well. That's very interesting. Right, very interesting. Right, so we can see this one here. So what it says here, sacred to the memory of number 23318, Sergeant H.E. Costello, Q.O.S. and M, who died at Mullacund on the 2nd of July 1896, aged 31 years old, not lost but, sorry, not lost but gone before, erected by his comrades and friends. And it says here, erected Mullacund by the fifth Queen's own Madras. I don't know, I don't know what is here. I can't really see the rest of it. Yeah, it's just, it's, just, it's well dug into the ground. I'll try to get close up and see if we can get anything from it. And when I look back at it, but this is, I think it's some sort of marker stone. I don't think it's headstone. So there we are. So now we're going to have a look at again gravestones here. There's a big slab here. That's quite an interesting one. You can see the slab over here. I wonder what's great that is. And another slab here. The grave. Another slab. More graves over there. I'm not going to venture over there, like I said. I'm moving back. There's a lot of graves here. Another one here. And you can see there's one there, one here, one here, one here. And as I go up the hill, another one here. This seems to be another, you can see here, this is marked out again. Here, unfortunately, we find a collapsed grave. You can see here, clearly that's collapsed. So that's a, a collapsed British soldier's grave. You see? I um, don't know what's in it, and uh, don't really want to find out to be honest, but that's a really collapsed one. And there's another 
Sorry about these angle issues here. There's another collapsed one here. And again, I'm going up the hill, hillside. And we can see again, grave, grave here. Curb stones here for a grave. Again here, again here. Here, and ah, this is an interesting one. Grave here. This is quite a stunning one, is this one? What's this? Quite ornate for this type of grave. Uh, so for it to be here, so let's read this. The sunlight is really beating down and it's, it's, it's very difficult to see. So the the camera shadow may come in the, in this photo. Uh, sorry, in this shot. So let me pan down first. And that's the extent of the grave. And it's just strange how this person is actually buried under here, which was killed in the in the war. So I'm gonna read this now. So it says Sacred to the memory of Lieutenant William Brown Clayton, 1st Battalion, the Queen's Royal West Kent Regiment. See the, the cross goes down here, and it says here, killed in action at, this is Agra Bajwar, uh, September, 30th, 1897. Quite a prominent grave. So he must have been somebody quite high up in the in the British uh, Raj Army, and that's quite an interesting one. And again, we have quite an interesting grave here. It's a large slab. I mean, who are these people? I mean, obviously British soldiers, but you know, why, why did it come to this? Why has this been completely forgotten? And there's a lot here, uh, I mean, so again, gravestone. Something that you could, you know, the, the, the stones at the side are something that we typically see in England. And again, I'm walking back. It's, it's behind me, there's two or three graves. Uh, and there seems to be a, a plinth over here with several, you can see here, I'm walking on it now. So there's a plinth with several, several graves, I believe here. One, two, three. Now this is quite an interesting one as well. Uh, let's, let's go back to here. Mindful of stepping in anything that could injure me. Right, so I'm going back down the hill. I'm sorry this has taken too long. Is it? There's just too much to cover, and because nobody's covered it before, I think it's important that it's uh, documented for you know for us in England and uh, uh, for the Pakistani community as well over in Pakistan. So here we are, and again there will have been crucifix. Headstones stones on here, one there, one there. I'll go back down again. One here, one here, here. And you can hear the crows in the background, a collapsed grave here. Another grave here. I'm going to step back again. Another grave here. And if anybody's asking these these plants, yes, it is. Uh, it is what you think it is. This is what it's growing wild here. So don't get too excited. I think those who recognise the plant will know what it is. 
but it's just going wild like I said. So again here, some sort of prominent marker. Grave here, grave here. There's a slab there. Cross here, grave here. Grave here, grave here. There's just graves everywhere. Um, down here, to be honest, I really don't feel like going down there. It's just a bit, uh, I don't know what could be down there. But you can see from this angle, there are graves, crosses. So, um, I'm going to walk backwards again. And show you again. Again, these, which I'll point out to you. These here. You can see each one of them is a is a grave. Obviously, there will have been a, a, a monument on there, a crucifix. I'm going to move back here. And there's more. Now we'll swing around behind this tree. There's a grave here. I'm going to move down here now. I'm coming towards the end of the graveyard now. Um, and we'll see you again. Graves here. This looks collapsed. Yeah, that is, that is definitely collapsed. Let's see what we can. Oh, I should have said something. Grave here. Cow seems to be getting a bit too close now. I'm going to move back now. And again, there's a, just graves everywhere here. Over here. Over here. I'm sorry if some of the angles aren't correct here. I'm really heavily restricted in filming, uh, so you may not get fully to see what I see. Oops, and it's quite a. Yeah, that's. This is a. I guess that's definitely collapsed. And it's quite a deep one, so I really I don't fancy venturing in there, but you can quite clearly see it is a collapsed grave. There is what may be in there, I don't know. There might be even snakes. That's why I don't fancy, fancy going in there. So here as well, you can see. And I think it's this grave that's collapsed, you can see from this angle. There's the perimeter of the wall and you can see that that wall is British built. And it's lasted. Very pretty place though. A lot, a lot of crows are here as well. Graves here. Big slab here. Don't know who this belongs to again. Um, and there's nothing, not, nothing on here that can, can even identify it with. And we're coming right towards the end now. So obviously there's a grave here. There's moundies. They'll be all around here. There's a marker there. Uh, and there's our local lawnmower, and um, and that's 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 it really. It's uh, to be honest, it's oh, another collapsed grave here, and uh, okay. On a on a sort of final note, um, interesting place, part of our shared history. Uh, obviously this was, was once part of India. It became Pakistan in 1947. There were various wars in this area against the Pathans, uh, the tribesmen who fought for their, for their land, for their rights, uh, and the, the British Raj Army fought against them. But prior to that it will have been the East India Company Army. So we have, uh, we have a shared history that goes well beyond uh, 
1960, it goes back to the 1700s, 1800s, 1900s, uh, and I hope this brings communities together to realise we have a bond, a, 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 a historical bond, you know, we, um, yeah, it's just a shame it's not talked about in history, and I'm sure that would sort of alleviate some of the trust issues, and uh, that, that some say that we have, and maybe we do. Uh, but let's hope that this video can help build bridges, bring the uh, communities together, so we can work together. Um, I'm, I, myself, as you all know, I'm, I'm a Bradford lad, I'm born in Bradford, but my heritage is, is actually from this area. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you've learned something, and I hope situations that have occurred like this I taught in, in schools as part of history. It's not just about the First and Second World War and about the Tudors, it's also about this and it's, it's, it's essential. Things like this are brought, uh, you know, to children, to all our children, from whichever background they are. They all deserve to know, you know, what's happened and, and uh, how we can learn from it and be friends and, you know, uh, work colleagues, etc. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, take care and, uh, until next time.